Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. My name is Cub Cooker. We are live here on TikTok right now. And if you're listening on the podcast, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. Facebook, welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed, give me a quick follow uh, so you can stay up on all things to do with this community. Well, we are looking at things in a very authentic manner. Now, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a scholar. I'm not an expert in these things other than I literally just study every day. I do this full time so that I can bring us the freshest information about what the Bible says, what other ancient scriptures say, and what our true place and purpose is within this entire cosmic narrative. Uh, we're talking about everything from faith to spirituality to the paranormal. How does all of that work together and how does it fit into the Old and New Testament as well as other spiritual texts that we talk about here. So if you're brand new and you like that kind of thing, you're going to love it here. Uh, and it's definitely going to be a challenging day on the podcast today. What is up, June? Thank you for being here. I appreciate you joining June is always here. Uh, Michael Breach, thank you for joining. Uh, how are you, uh, Orbex? What is up? June, thanks for the likes. I appreciate it. Me, welcome. Um, so I'm going to be reading some things today. We're going to be talking about El Elyon, Yahweh, the original creation, the book of Enoch, and the true description of what an angel is. And how that fits into a narrative that we have just honestly, guys, missed out on in all of our modern theologies and faith structures. Uh, it's something that was certainly not foreign to people long ago and even in the time of Christ. And if you look at the message that Jesus came to share, it was a very secret message. It was something that was right under the noses of uh, these scribes and scholars that just... Uh, wanted to kind of keep all of these rules and these laws to keep people out of the kingdom. Um, and we, we see that today going on, guys, unfortunately. So um, I'm just here as kind of uh, someone to be out here in the wilderness. And uh, whoever uh, comes to me, whoever uh, resonates with this message. So I do, I do tell you that my message is if they don't resonate with you, that's okay. There's plenty of other channels out there that teach Torah. There's plenty of other channels that teach uh, just basic spirituality. There's plenty of channels that teach uh, just straight from the Bible. And that is okay, and that is awesome. Um, and I personally follow a lot of those channels. But my channel is to look at the weird side of things, the what-if side of things, um, and try to figure out what is the authentic gospel. What is our authentic place and purpose in all of this? And I'm going to be reading two different creation stories today, literally one chapter away from each other, right in Genesis, that is going to show two, what I believe is different beings, different voices, and that we have two different voices going on in the Old Testament. You have the voice that requires sacrifice. You have the voice that is angry, that can be bargained and negotiated with. You have the voice that brings good and evil, the voice that tempts. And then you have a very different voice, the voice that is original creation, the voice that is light, the voice that predicts the coming of Christ, the voice that tells us we're a part of the kingdom, the voice that tells that he does not need a sacrifice, the voice that tells that he is here to reconcile all things, the voice that is judging the fallen angels or what became the gods on this earth. And again, I look at all of this just so that you know early on, early on in this podcast, I look at all of this through an extraterrestrial lens because I do fully believe, and this is personally my opinion and belief, that this planet has and continues to be visited by extraterrestrial beings who are divine beings of God's order. Um, and these beings are not all good and they're not all bad. It is a complicated and complex heavenly hierarchy uh, that we deal with and that we see. And so that's what I like to dig into. That's what I like to uh, try to understand here. And uh, again, I'm not here to say this is gospel truth. Believe me, every word I'm saying, but I'm saying have an open mind. 
And I got a lot of comments yesterday that were fantastic, people really resonating with this message. And then a lot of people really surprised that I'm teaching this. Um, so either way, you know, stick around. Maybe uh, there'll be a moment that a few months down the road, you'll read something and go, hey, wait a minute. I wonder what that means. I wonder how that ties together. And so really what I'm going to share today to me has just been kind of a life changing, life altering, uh, in a very positive way, revealing of what's like really going on here, what we've been missing out on. So being is all there is. Absolutely, Vince. That's And I'm going to be talking about that. And I think that's a big message that we miss in the Old Testament. The being, El, El Elyon, God Most High, the one that uh, Christ was saying, you know, on the cross, Eli, Eli, uh, Elion, Elion, God Most High. He wasn't calling out the name of Yahweh. And I do understand that the name Yahweh is like um, a translation that was put together based on what they thought the Most High God was. But as we're going to see today, you've got a lot of different bloodlines running around through the Bible. And you've got different priesthoods. You have the Levitic priesthood. And you have the Melchizedek priesthood. And we're going to look at both of those today um, and kind of decipher some of this stuff. Because, guys, this, it's literally mind-blowing. And that's, I put a little mind-blown emoji in the title. Um, because this, this changes everything for me personally. It's changed who and how I worship. Uh, no longer am I afraid of my God. I am approaching Him inwardly and fully understanding that I am a part of Christ. He is in me and I am in him and that I'm a part of that divine order. And it's it's a beautiful thing when we can kind of let go of some of our religiosity and churchianity and approach this through, uh, and he said, even Christ said, he said, the day will come when you must worship my father in spirit and in truth. And that's what I'm trying to do here on this podcast. So as I teach spirituality and I teach uh, faith and I teach paranormal concepts here. Uh, always meditate on your own. Always pray. And just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not true. Um, it doesn't mean also that everything I say is true. So with that, I am working out my own understanding, but I feel an honor and a duty to bring this out to everyone as I'm learning because you guys have brought information to me that is just really tied stuff together that I didn't see, that I didn't have. So that's why I put it out here. And somebody asked me the other day, why don't you work this out better before you talk about it? And it's like, guys, I do this every day. If I worked it out better, I'd never do this. And I'd be uh, trying to work at a supermarket or delivering or something. I wouldn't be doing this for a living. I wouldn't be sitting here fully blessed by God the Father to be able to just pour out um, into you guys every day and into myself and into this beautiful reality that he's given us. Uh, to go ahead and talk about these concepts. And so that's my job. That's my duty to just bring the concepts out. You guys decide what to do with them, how to internalize them, how to understand them, understand them yourselves, because that's not my job. My job is just to bring it out and discuss it. So, yes, sir, the great I am. Uh, you and Josh are the only ones on here teaching real truth, searching for God. Thank you so much. She's talking about Sons of God Ministries. If you never talked, uh, never looked up Josh's channel, Sons of God Ministries, on uh, YouTube, on TikTok, Facebook. I think he's everywhere now, and I think he has a podcast as well. Um, I'd love to do a live with him someday. He sparked a lot of this interest. A few months ago, um, at the beginning of this year, um, I had a really, really life-shaking event. I had a contract that was a big contract with my company. Um, and it was actually through um, a place that I had been a part of ever since I was a child. Um, and I'm certainly not on here to name names or anything, nor am I upset about it. Um, but it was, it was very shaking at the time. And at the time, I couldn't understand why I was having to leave this institution and, and leave this contract that I had. Um, but now I get it because now freed from all of the constructs, all of, uh, these, even, even the accounts that I had, um, uh, focusing on my business, being a businessman, um, I'm able to just freely explore these ideas of faith and spirituality and paranormal and not worry about, um, even really trying to go deal with a bunch of clients. I still have a handful of clients, uh, that I love, love, love taking care of, uh, that I do like website work and stuff for, 
but beyond that, I'm not taking any new clients. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm fully 100% full time with this. And uh, this is where a lot of my income is coming from. So thank you guys who have bought my book, who bought the books of Enoch through this, and just people that have just straight up donated through my PayPal. All of that's on my website at cubcooker.me and uh, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.me. And that's a great place you can go support me, uh, be it through me serving you through one of my products or services there, or you just making an actual donation to me. All of it goes to the same place to just help me continue showing up every single day on this podcast. Every single day, we're drop, dropping between five and 10 videos every day on all platforms, guys. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Um, we're doing LinkedIn now, Pinterest. Guys, we're hitting them at all angles with this. So uh, that's really, really important to me as you guys support this to just for you to know that I'm committed. I'm not here saying I'm going to do more. I'm just doing more. Um, and I watch a lot of pastors show up and this isn't to call anyone out, but I've watched a lot of pastors show up and say, Oh, we're going to launch this and we're going to do this and we're going to, and guys, I'm not saying we're gonna, I'm, we're doing it. It's on, it's happening. Here we are. So, um, I teach not to believe in fairy tales. Eric says, Hey, good for you, man. Um, I don't either. So what's your take on the golden dawn? Um, I will have to look that up, Chris. Good question. I don't know what the Golden Dawn is. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, we are the first fruits. Amen, Just Jason. Good, good, good. You, you know what I'm talking about here, Jason. Thank you. Um, let's see. Eric says, wow, you do this for a living. Uh, what's God pay like? Uh, not near as good as the world. I'll tell you that, man. Not near as good as the world. You go sell your soul to the world and you get a lot. You get, get everything you want. Uh, I have to play by God's rules, the most high's rules, uh, and I have to come in here and be honest and, and speak, um, speak honesty here. I have to be very candid with everyone, and I have to show up every day and show him that I'm here and that I want this and that I'm willing to put in the work and be his servant. Uh, and that's a big difference. You get a lot of these people that... Um, they kind of abandon um, all of their morals, all of their uh, beliefs, and go and do something. And I was trying to do that for a long time, trying to do that through my business, serving the almighty dollar versus doing what I knew I was being called to do. And I've taken a huge, huge financial hit doing this and not rebuilding my business. But I fully believe this is exactly what God wants me to do. So before you go judging me, Eric, understand, brother, 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 I've given up everything to do this everything i don't think you realize uh if you knew me if you're my brother if you're walking with me every day i got a buddy i play frisbee with every day he knows exactly what i've given up uh i've given up everything i've given up friends and family for this i've given up my house uh i moved to a new house in the city uh, a much smaller house like i literally have given everything up to do this and i believe that's one of the calls that we have from christ it's not that we don't get um, a good life, a good kingdom life. But this world, you know, Satan took Christ to the top of the uh, mountain and said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Just bow down and worship me. And that's true, guys. That's all it takes. You want everything in this world, just bow down and worship Ha Satan. Worship the world. Worship uh, the, the principalities and the powers of the world. And that word, when we hear that uh, we fight a battle that is not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers... Those are talking about hierarchies of angels, heavenly realms, not uh, just like kings and rulers in the world. And so we got we to gotta take the Bible and do a way throwback here and start to look at uh, ancient beliefs, pre-biblical ancient beliefs, and understand where the Old Testament came out of. And we're going to be doing some of that today. So uh, searching for God, um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you uh, searching for God. Um, at J says, that's right. Uh, remember, this world can pay cash, but our treasure is in heaven. Amen, brother. Amen. Uh, and God always gives us our bread. Like, if there's something I need for this ministry, if I need a studio, I need to hire people, I need whatever, he knows what the needs are, and he's going to show up with them. Like, he's never early, he's never late. Toby Mac just released a song, um, and in that song, he says, he's never early, he's never late. Help is on the way. And I, guys, I'm telling you, 
That is true. Our daily bread is here for us every single day. We start living like that. We start living a real kingdom life where we're chasing the kingdom and we're bringing the kingdom. The kingdom is coming through us. That changes everything, guys. Everything. Again, it doesn't mean that he doesn't elevate our empire here on earth, but it's got to be according to his plan. It's got to be. And I've built things outside of his plan. Not that he didn't bless them, but they were fallible. They fell when the sand was washed out under it. And what he's building right now will not be shaken. And so that's a beautiful, beautiful understanding that he's been giving me lately. So 74 Leathercraft. What's up, Jacob? Jacob says, very true. Amen. Um, let's see. The kingdom comes through us. Just Jason. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So we're going to read a couple of things today um, because we are still in our Enoch study. I want to jump into Enoch. We're going to talk about aliens and angels and stuff like that for a minute. Then I'm going to read you guys some, some crazy cool stuff out of the Names of God translation, which kind of puts the, the Hebrew names back in so that we understand the different entities that's being talked about, even in Genesis. And this is really, really cool. Um, and I love that, like I said, myself and a couple of these other guys here on TikTok uh, over at uh, Sons of God Ministries are some of the few people talking about this. Um, and it's just crazy. Um, it's crazy that there's not a lot of people talking about this. And he has understanding in some things that I just don't. Um, so, But I think I have some understandings and things he does it too. I pull a lot of the extraterrestrial lore into it. I study a lot of that. I know he does somewhat, like he pulls the Anunnaki ideology into it. Uh, but I really like to look at the different types of spacecraft and the hierarchies of angels and kind of try to understand that whole thing. So Gnosis, yes, absolutely. Uh, I came to similar conclusions through my life. Uh, Gnosis, yes, absolutely, Jason. Uh, I'm a big uh, Gnosticism fan, not in every assumed form, because some of it goes a little off path from my current understanding. But I do believe that from the very beginning, even from the garden, uh, we've been under uh, a spell of sorts, uh, under a deception. Uh, and those with eyes to see and ears to hear, right? Like that doesn't make sense until it makes sense. And so that's a big, big difference there. So uh, when Jesus said you must be like a child, he was telling you to lose all worldly concepts and just be amen, amen. Vince of York says that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and what a good truth. You guys, I love when you guys comment stuff like that because it just, it, I feel like the spirit just works through all of this and like our spirits connect and we're connected with God and you guys plug stuff in uh, that the, I didn't even have over here. I don't even have it pulled up, but you got it pulled up. God pulls it up in your brain. We have to remember the internet's cool, but we're the ultimate internet of believers. We should be. We shouldn't be out here arguing theology and doctrine and all of this junk Back and forth, well, I'm this denomination. No, I'm that denomination. Well, I don't believe this and I don't believe that. We should just look at truth, unfold it together, explore it together, and be Christ's on the earth. Be Christ's as in we're his, but also Christ's as in we're our own Christ to people. We now have the power to impart that on others and lead others with us. And I just, I, I don't see us doing that. I don't see us doing that in our church groups. I don't see us doing that. Um, in our friend groups, I see that we're worried about the day-to-day. -day. We're worried about the job. We're worried about the bills. Like with me, I sold my house. Forget the bills. Sell the house. That's just what I did. I can't tell you what to do. But I'm telling you, this is the most important thing for me uh, to get this message out here. This is Tabernacle for 2022. What up? Very, very good. Very good. Thank you, guys. Uh, good stuff today. So, And I've been I've been studying all day, guys. And I had... I've got a, a spreadsheet going right now. Um, and so the biggest premise right now that we've been talking through on this, and this is where a lot of people get get really turned off with my channel. And this is okay. And if you do, my apologies. If you do, please stick around. Please understand where we're going with this. Yahweh and El Elyon, God Most High, I believe, and I believe the data is there, the scripture is there, and I also believe that my heart is there, that they are two different entities. I believe that that God of Israel that led Abraham, Isaac, J Jacob, that line, that Israel was the portion of that God, Yahweh, because 
you have the verses that talk about when the Most High says, I will send them out amongst their gods. I will divide the tribes amongst the sons of God. Now, later translations of the Bible changed that from sons of God to sons of Israel. And that, that just doesn't work. If you look at the original translations, um, you've got the sons of God. Sons of God meaning the angelic realms of heavenly host. We're talking about divine beings here, not uh, the earthly creation, not the humanity creation. And so, again, that's my belief. Now, once we go ahead and just press that button and say, okay, what if, and we start looking for evidence of that in Scripture, that's when things start getting crazy, guys. That's when your mind starts getting blown, your heart gets touched. You go, oh my gosh, have I really, have I really been on the wrong page this whole time? You're not in the wrong book, but you're just on the wrong... It's just one more page over, just like in Genesis. Genesis 1, chapter 1, and Genesis chapter 2 are two different creation stories. Obviously, two different creation stories. And I've been told my whole life that those are because this is how one person understood it, and this is how another person... They just had two different scripts that they put together, and they wanted to include both. No, I think there's a clue there, guys. I think there's a clue all through the Bible. I think Christ himself, every word that came out of his mouth was a clue as to who his real father was. Not the father that they tried to ascribe to him and tried to justify all this stuff that had been done with the old gods. And again, I believe Yahweh was one of those old gods, one of those that was supposed to take Israel as a portion and do right by them and maybe did in some cases... And I don't even understand the whole going back to the garden thing. And a lot of Gnosticism believes that Yahweh is the serpent in the garden. Is that true? I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, And then some Gnostics say that Yahweh is the God in the garden and the serpent is actually El. And that that's what it's about. So I don't understand that part either. I'm just, I'm being honest with you guys. I don't have it all worked out yet. But there's other people that have other pieces of it. And you, you can go watch their channels. And you can watch mine. And you can get the books for yourself. And you can read. And you can pray. And you can seek understanding. Because he will pour out understanding on you. And he is in me. And he will with you. So how come Satan didn't recognize Jesus on earth? Uh, well, technically he did. Because... He took him up to the mountain, told him to worship, uh, and he would give him all the kingdoms of the earth. Wiped out our heritage? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, Always, always. Yet again, I think the Matrix always has clues because even in Romans it says, ever since the beginning of creation, my unseen qualities have been clearly visible through that which I created, so they are without excuse for not knowing me. And so I think that this matrix just shows all these little nuggets of truth throughout it. Like you can connect the dots. And I don't think it takes just a creative brain to try to connect the dots. Like, hope this works. Hope that works. Let me cut this and put it together. No, I think it really is fairly clear if you just literally abandon all. Like I had to do. Abandon my faith. Abandon my home. Abandon... Uh, my business, abandoned everything. Uh, I kept um, the the things that were heavenly. I kept my marriage. That was it, you know. Um, I even got a different vehicle twice during all of that. I downsized to a little, little vehicle and then realized, hey, this isn't going to work and then prayed that, you know, God show me like, maybe I made a quick decision with this Lord and, and maybe I got too small a vehicle. I was trying to be economical in this time of of uh, kind of having to shrink back to get ready to spring forward um and i was like i just prayed and then i i've got this beautiful jeep now that it was a god thing it was the only one on the lot had just come off the truck there's like nobody there that day i walked in i found it i'm like i want this it was the right price the right color everything told the salesman let's do it i want it he didn't even believe me like it was just it was a god thing and it just we were signed and done, same night, I got to drive it home. It was just a beautiful gift, and, and that's what I'm talking about. Good, good, good gifts come from El, El Elyon, God the Father, God Most High. 
Those are the gifts that can't be shaken. This is the first vehicle I've ever had in my life that I can conceivably see keeping forever. Like as long as I'm on this earth, like I will drive it till the wheels fall off and then I'll rebuild it and, and make it into a toy to play up in the mountains with like, um, and that's a testament to the gift. And I know, and, and yes, that's a material thing, but it's a, when you start getting gifts from God most high, they feel different spiritually you feel a much different connection with it. It's not a material connection. It's like an ordained connection. Like I'm using this to build God's kingdom. Like you just feel it. And I'm not talking about, you know, all the guys that have multi-million dollar mansions in the name of Jesus and everything. I'm talking about for real guys. Like, uh, you know, I got to work on this thing with my friend. Um, I got to work on it with my dad. I've been able to do the build myself. Um, it's just one of the coolest vehicles I've ever had. And it's, I, I think that's because I feel, I resonate with it so deeply. Um, how do you feel about Muslim faith? I don't have any problem with that. Just like any, any faith. I think there's this old saying, and, um, I think it's a Hindu belief that all rivers lead to the ocean. And I believe that in a sense, because I think everyone searching truly for God, for the true God will discover Christ in the water on the way to that ocean. Um, and I'm not talking about the evangelical modern Jesus. I'm talking about Christ, the one that is in and through all things, the word of God. Everybody wants to say the word of God is this Bible, this book. I'm going to hold it up because I do this on every, every live stream. Everybody wants to say this is the word of God. The word of God is Christ. He's not a Bible. He's not the book. This book, there's a thousand different translations of this as we're about to see. And I can tell you every one of them is not the Word of God. So let's talk about the Word of God for real. The essence, the purity of it is Christ. And it's in you and me, by the way. And it has been all along. And every person on the planet, I believe, has it. I believe everyone is going to get saved by Him. I believe He came to buy us back from the gods from the old sacrifices. I even saw a connection the other day. El is the is the bull, represented by a bull, and he's, he's the god of gods in the Sumerian culture. Above all, above all of them. And he didn't have as big of a... He created everything and started everything, and then he sent his other gods out. He had like 70 sons. One of them was Yahweh, a lot of people believe. Uh, one of them was Baal. Um, his wife was Asherah, the Asher pole. Um, again, these are all the Sumerian mythologies. So I'm giving you that. Uh, and I don't always believe that mythologies are myth. I think a lot of times they are highly based on truth and experiences with these beings in early ancient times, because we can't handle it now. We are so prideful. We can't even see them. Why do you think people that are finally humbled that finally say, I don't know, they start having all these experiences. It's because they don't know. You put your pride away and you let your old life pass away and you literally step into new life, new sight, new understanding. He said, if thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Thine eye be single. It's a very, very uh, Eastern ideology, that third eye. But he was talking about it, guys. Like, how else do you describe that? People over-spiritualize it. He's literally talking about spiritual practice. He's talking about oneness. He's talking about finding God. He's talking about becoming Christ's on the earth. He was the final bull, the final sacrifice to satisfy the wrath of the gods. And that's what I really believe, guys. And the more I talk about it, the more I believe it because it just all fits together. And again, people come at me and go, I can't believe you're teaching that. And it's like, well, I can't either, by the way. So I wake up every morning and go, what am I doing? And the more I read, the more I ask God, it just comes back to me. And it's like this filling every day. He fills me and it pours out of me. And that's because it's coming from this place of inner truth, guys. That inner self, that inner part that we are of God. And I think that that's a beautiful thing when we all let that happen. Yes, sir. God's on the past. Our angels... In the army, I fir firmly believe that. Yes, absolutely. And we see that there were, I think they still work on our planet and take care of our planet and keep us from blowing ourselves up. We see that happen a ton in the 1950s. Um, we see 
anytime we started uh, sparking those atomic things that we shouldn't be, those things showed up. And I'm about to read to you, this is a perfect segue. I'm about to read to you guys in um, Enoch. This is beautiful. So, first off, we're in Enoch chapter 5, verse 13. Enoch says, And I entered into that house, and it was hot as fire and cold as ice. There were no delights of life therein. Fear covered me, and trembling got a hold upon me. What does that sound like, guys? Have you ever read an abduction, an alien abduction account? Uh, they talk about the cold steel. They talk about the heat from the, 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 the energy sources in there. Uh, they talk about being terrified and afraid and feeling like they're in a vision. Uh, but then there's things comforting them, saying, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Every time in the Bible an angel comes to someone and says, hey, don't be afraid. You know, have we ever thought about that? You look at Moses in the burning bush. You see, it looked like amber enfolding on itself. And yet it did not consume the bush. And so, again, when we start putting the context of extraterrestrial, understanding that they're not just people from another planet, they are spiritual entities, and they can manifest and transmute themselves in different manners, first and foremost being the craft that they travel through time and space in that protects their body. And then they can manifest as a man, and I'm about to prove that with Enoch here, so... Josh, what is up? How are you doing? Um, uh, Vince of York. Uh, oh, just Jason's talking to Vince. He says, um, a clean ship, no life, no plants or animals, void of life. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what we're talking about here. Like you literally get this spaceship depiction in Enoch. And Enoch says, I quaked and trembled. I fell upon my face and I beheld a vision and lo, there was a second house greater than the former and the entire portal stood open before me and it was built on flames of fire. I believe he's seen into the eternal here. I believe he's having a vision through this God that he was taken up to meet and he's having a vision of the true God. He's probably having a vision of Christ himself. Um, and so, because he talks about a being that he can't even see, it's, it's face. He said, and behold, the great glory sat thereon on the second throne and the raiment." His clothing shone more brightly than the sun and was whiter than any snow. What else, what other entity in the Bible do we have that description of? Oh yeah, Christ. Um, and again, so we see he's there through all of this. And not in the way that like the modern evangelical belief system tries to paint it, where it's the little st stick figure of Jesus everywhere. Oh, he's everywhere. He's everywhere you look. It's like, no, it's like we're in a matrix, and once you rip that open, you see him. Because the only reason that this matrix could even be made into what it is, the physical world was made by the gods. The spiritual world and the truth about what we live in was created by El, by God Most High, by the Creator. And that's what I believe. And again, if you stay with me, probably going to take us years to go through all this stay with me and we're going to just uncover more and more and more of this because i can't i have not hit a wall when i'm digging yet and most things if i have a theory i'll run into a wall pretty quick and i have not run into a wall with this guys it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and then you just realize like oh my gosh are there really two voices in the old testament that changes everything about our understanding of what the Old Testament means. And then you start reading what Jesus said, and it's like, oh my gosh, of course he was talking about that. Like, of course he said dot, dot, dot. And I'll give you guys more examples. But, okay, so, you know, he's, he's on the ship. He said, none of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory, and no flesh could behold him. So he's, there's literally a portal open. It says portal. Um, and so... The angels can't even go in that portal, it doesn't sound like, because there's so much light shining out of it. Then he goes on and says, The flaming fire round about him, and the great fire stood before him, and none around could draw nigh to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand were before him, yet he needed no counselor. He stands alone, like, and you've got tens upon tens of thousands of these angelic beings in front of him, and, and Enoch's looking through what sounds like a portal in this section. And the most holy ones who were nigh him did not leave by night, nor depart from him. And until then I had been prostrate on my face, so he's fallen on his face, trembling. And the Lord called me with his own mouth and said to me, 
Come hither, Enoch, and hear my word. Hey, Marvell, my baby puppy is here. She came to help. Um, hear my word. And I think that's, if I'm going to encourage anyone today, it's to, to heed that. Hear my word. That it's not just a um, read my Bible. It's a hear my word. Those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Marvell, I'm in the middle of a live stream, honey. She just goobered all over my computer screen. She has jowls, like, uh, she almost looks like a bloodhound. She's a Great Dane, but, like, she's still a puppy. She's got the longest jowls that hang down, and she'll shake her head and goober all over my computer and everything, and it's, it's super awesome. Sorry, I had to get a drink there. As we continue here, uh, we're beings that have been made up from the DNA of multiple gods like Anunnaki. Yeah, absolutely, I believe that. Um, and I think that, you know, our flesh here, um, had to, that DNA literally had to be repaired through the blood of Christ, through what he did. Um, and now we can communicate directly with God again. We don't have to go through the gods, uh, because Christ became our connector, our mediator, like literally our spirit can reconnect to the mothership. And I'm not saying that El Elyon is on a ship, but he is in spirit. He is in truth. And we can connect to him now through that. Um, and we have the ability to even see through the matrix because of what Christ did for us. Just mind blowing guys, mind blowing. Um, and you got, I've, I had a pastor arguing with me the other day on this and talking about like, you know, if I would quit cherry picking and if you just look at, and I only cherry pick because you got to tie things together and otherwise we're going to sit here and read the entire Bible. We've got to connect the dots and then reread the Bible and try to understand it. And that's where I come from it at. So you have a lot of people that are highly educated in this uh, that have literally been trained to not see this. Let me say that again. You have a lot of people who are highly educated in the scriptures, just like the scribes, and they've been trained not to see what we're talking about today. And so um, I just think this work is so important. I consider it a high calling of light work light worker work, bringing light back to humanity. Everybody talks about this Luciferian stuff and that it's like, oh, bringing the fake light to humanity or whatever. And uh, a lot of people are calling my brand of belief here, uh, you know, something to be afraid of and that it's like new age and all of this stuff. Um, but honestly, guys, it just, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. I've questioned things in this Bible my entire life. And once I started looking at it through this lens and God finally went, hey, you need to throw all your old beliefs out and start fresh and look at this afresh. And that just changed everything for me. So, uh, come on somebody, uh, bro. I feel blessed to catch this live. Uh, what's up Jay? Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. You can actually channel these beans right now. Definitely. I believe so. I also believe there's a Godhead. I believe there's multiple beans in, in a lot of cultures. There's nine beans. They kind of stand between the Most High and the other gods uh, because I think more physical form is had by the lower the spiritual being. We've got obviously perishable physical forms. Then you have the extraterrestrial different races that go up. Then you have the nine. Then you have uh, what a lot of people refer to as the Trinity. And you have the feminine, the divine feminine and the divine masculine as one, as the Godhead. Uh, the product of that is the word that created the birth of life, Christ. Um, and so again, that's a very Gnostic view and a little bit of tweaking on the Gnostic beliefs, but uh, that's just kind of how I view it. That's how my imagination imagines it. And that's okay, guys. Sometimes we have to use our imagination. And remember, our imagination connects to a divine matrix. There's nothing new under the sun. Every idea you pull is literally pulling from a heavenly realm and creating a shadow of that here in this physical universe. So uh, if you replace Jesus with the Logos and replace the Father with being, the Bible begins to make sense. Vince of York. Yes, dude. Uh, Vince, you're on fire, man. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, then we talk about the giants. Um, here's something interesting. So, uh, the giants were the product of the angels or the gods, the fallen angels creating their own race with the daughters of men. Then they started to kind of reign, uh, through a lot of, uh, violence and whatnot. You know, it was not a good time. God had to send the flood. 
um, and then unalived a lot of those giants, and then their spirits started to torment people on the earth. And here's the description of that. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, and do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. Here's why I think this line is important in Enoch. They take no food. Why is that important? Because it's still a warning against them. Even though the gods were taking food, they needed sacrifices. And then they also had children, the giants, that needed to eat, that that were probably partaking in those sacrifices as well. So these biblical sacrifices, um, a lot of times, I think, are to actually give sustenance to these extraterrestrial entities who are divine and are above us and are supposed to be serving at the will of the Most High, but didn't always do a good job. And that's an understatement uh, of, of managing the resources on this planet and this physical realm. So... Anyway, it says, And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against women because they have proceeded from them. So it's almost like a magnetic, like they've proceeded from our flesh anyway and from the divinity. So they're they're going to kind of go after us exclusively, it sounds like. Getting here into the end of this. So 33, and I think this is important, high level of understanding, 33 here. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them who had been aforetime in heaven so god is is judging the watchers here he's saying hey you've been in heaven he's telling enoch say to them you have been in heaven but all the mysteries had not been revealed to you and you knew worthless ones and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on the earth Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. That's powerful, guys, because you see that God is passing judgment on them. And he's saying, hey, you've been in heaven and you taught them. You taught them all these magics. You taught them all this stuff. You taught them technology. We see all these ancient civilizations. We don't have a clue how they were built. Of course, they're being helped. If you take any of this seriously, you see that they were helped by these extraterrestrial beings, brought technology, brought medicines, brought magic, brought divination and how to wield spirits and all this stuff. These people knew way more than we do today. We just do it through all of our pop culture and music and television and all that stuff now. Uh, We just have a shadow upon a shadow upon a shadow and we're about to have the metaverse, which is a shadow upon a shadow upon a shadow upon a shadow. It goes deep, deep, deep. Um, But he's saying, God's saying, hey, those are worthless You don't even know. I didn't even reveal it to you, but I know he revealed it to his son. And I believe that it's revealed through us. I believe those of us that have our eyes open and eyes to see and ears to hear truly see more mysteries than even these watchers came and taught humanity. Uh, Not only were they helped, they wrote about it on their walls. Yes, Robert, absolutely. And, And you... Every corner of civilization, hundreds of thousands of miles apart, you find very clear evidence that we've been visited over and over and over and over and helped, and that this God and this God and this God are all the same entity. It's all performing the same functions. I think there's something like uh, 70 main ones, according to the Sumerian text that we've talked about. Um, and I think that under them, there's more and more and more and more. We saw the watchers were originally 200. A lot of them have been chained up. Uh, and then going past that, how many were left to try to manage humanity. And uh, we talk about Yahweh's portion being Israel. Um, and then we see some of the decisions he made with that. But then you realize that you have a loving God that's bringing all of this together and trying to correct what's been misappropriated in some sense. Uh, what do you think about ancient aliens and what we're being told about the reset isn't true? So I love, love, oh, your mom. I love your name, your mom. Um, a lot of ancient aliens I agree with. A lot of it I don't. However, I feature it on, I feature it on my link because a lot of my research is sparked by something I hear on that. So I'll hear something and go, oh, wow, that's crazy. And then I go look it up. Sure enough, and all this data, all this information, then you can tie it into the biblical text. You tie it into the ancient text. And it's like, and it's all there. And 
they don't have anyone on that show that's purely focused on this type of mission, this type of bringing light back into the world. Um, and they can't fully do that on that public forum like that, the way we can do here. I mean, this is still a public forum, but we also have our community here and that's why I'm able to do this. Um, so there's a, there's a different approach, but you can certainly look at a lot of that and then start to look at what scripture says and go, Hmm, I think that fits into this. And I see that this God in this culture looks a lot like this God in this culture, Yahweh and by look almost identical in their description. They come in fire and smoke. They were the gods of uh, the storm back in those times. Baime is the aboriginal god. He brought the law. He brought the process that people should live by uh, to be seen as righteous in the heavens by their heavenly um, brothers and gods. Uh, I mean, it just it all fits together, guys. Um, so the Galactic Federation of Light, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, see, just from hearing these comments, um, we come from different walks. Yeah, we do, we do, um, absolutely. Um, uh, checked out C E R N, yes, and and so I think Shiva in Hindu culture is Apollyon in the uh, Greek culture, and so you see Apollyon in Revelation. I think it's the same God. We just call them by different names. And why do we call them by different names? Because we would put this together so easily if we weren't scrambled upon the earth at the Tower of Babel and given to our gods uh, and different tribes had different gods. And then I'm sure some of those gods visited the tribe over and had to help and do things. And we don't have any idea, guys, but it, it just starts to come together when you realize if we all spoke one language and we all had one pantheon of gods, we might easily be able to see through the veil on this. But again, those with eyes to see and ears to hear. And Christ, I believe the more you actually embody him and he embodies you, you're in him and he's in you, you actually start to see a lot of this clearly. And I think that that's, I think he's the key to really seeing this, to unlocking the light within you. Um, and, and we just don't talk about that. And I wish I could read, I was going to read um, Genesis and get into some of my notes here and everything, but I think we have, uh, we've kind of run the hour out here and I don't like to do too long because I like people to be able to take these in somewhat bite-sized pieces and internalize it. But let me start chapter six in Enoch, Taken by Angels. So right here in chapter six, this is another great place where we see these angels and I'm going to put this picture on the screen. This is a picture I made with um, AI technology using mid-journey AI, which I love. Uh, there's Abel Grumbling in the background again. And this, I typed in, I said, um, Yahweh descending on Mount Sinai and fire and smoke. And I just typed in that verse from the Bible, and this is it, guys. Look, see the portal opening up here? See the portal, see the, the craft coming down? And, you know, those crafts, they shimmer in the sun. And at night, you see them. They look like amber enfolding themselves. They're like little little balls of flame. You know, they call them orbs or unidentified aerial phenomenon. Um, and so what I'm about to read in Enoch is mind-blowing. And Keep this picture in your head. I'll, I'll show you guys again. So that picture. So angels took me and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished, they appeared as men. So you have something like this. You see the craft. You see that idea of, okay, it's coming in flaming fire. But then when they wish, when these entities decide to, they can what? They can transmute. transmute they can beam down. They can manifest as men as entities, as being like entities, you know, that, you know, you look at that and it's like, and again, this is just artwork made by AI. I'm not saying that's exactly what they look like, but you can see how we get this angelic representation and then they're coming out of these crafts and then they, they manifest themselves. And I just think it's all there guys. I think it's all there. And I, and I may sound crazy and that's okay. You guys that are on here all the time, you love my crazy. Uh, you guys that are brand new, you'll, you'll either love it or you'll go, well, that's not my brand of crazy. So we all have our own brand of it, right? So, 
through channeling, I've been informed that even the aliens can't even explain God. I fully believe that. I fully believe that. Uh, your mom says Anunnaki, absolutely. Um, the AI that it, you think that it pulls in info from parallel universes. Yeah, I think it pulls in because if we're all connected to parallel universes, it's pulling information from us. Like the AI literally pulls from all corners of the internet all written, spoken, visual data that we have in the world. Well, all of that comes from us too, so it can probably draw parallels that we can't even draw. So does that make sense? Like, again, I'm not saying this is gospel what an angel looks like. Let me move out of the way completely for you. I'm not saying this is gospel what an angel looks like, but it's probably what one of them looks like, one race of them, one, uh, one classification of them. Um, or what someone has seen at some point because again it's pulling from all human intelligence and we know that human intelligence isn't just from our brains we know that we pull from a field around us um, and some of us pull from a matrix field that's made in the flesh here that does have divinity within it but some of us actually pull directly from the godhead if we have christ in us truly and then that's a whole different can of worms Eric Vaughn uh, Dankin does a lot from the book of Enoch yeah yeah Eric uh, Vaughn Donican or whatever however you say his name absolutely amazing he does a lot of the ancient alien stuff uh, he's got a very good handle on book of Enoch and I love his accent so uh, that image uh, gets me did you post uh, this I saw this um, Jay, yeah, I posted it earlier on one of my TikToks. I made it over on Mid Journey, and uh, it's the background of one of my TikToks. So, um, let's see who else we got on here. Um, so you are not crazy, bro. Um, I wasn't into the Bible, but like I said, something happened and I started putting things together. So you're not crazy, Jay says. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I think this is happening with a lot of people, guys. Like, I think this is happening in all corners of the globe. People are just starting to wake up, come online, start to put things together. And you got a lot of pushback on that. There's a lot of people that, uh, that are, you know, the by-the-book people rather than by the books and understanding the larger narrative that we're all a part of and understanding that our true intelligence comes from within. That comes from the kingdom within. Christ said that the kingdom does not come with visible signs, yet you have millions of people that believe that, that it will. And I'm not saying one of them won't, but I'm saying the one that Christ talked about, it's here, it's within me right now. And it's manifesting through what we're doing right now, today, in this moment. I love you guys. I've got to run. It's 440 here in Rillo and Amarillo. So uh, AI is all that scares me, LOL. If they decide they don't need us, nah, you can never replace us. We are, we're divine, guys. We have something divine in us, and that's always going to shine through. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid. I mean, Christ, there's no fear in Christ, guys. Like, if you have him in you, and I'm not talking about the church version or the religiosity version of him, I'm talking about the real him, light, love, your divinity, you know something in you is deeper and truer than anything else you've seen. You have that, you will never be replaced by a computer or a matrix or a whatever, because you have something that that will never have. It's only a shadow and you are the light. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I've got to run. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I love my Jesus. Always have. June says, amen, amen. And don't stop, guys. Don't stop because that's, that's, that's how we make it out of this, right? Like that's what, that's what our inner being is. He holds all things together. He is the Word and the Word is in us. And we can shine brighter with that every day. The more you realize that and meditate on that, the brighter you shine and the less any of that can replace you. Love you guys. Uh, Jay says, be safe, bro. Don't stop. Thank you so much. I will, man. You guys pray for me. Um, pray for this ministry that it just keeps to grow, 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 and reach millions of people. Uh, amen. Thank you for sharing. Shannon says, thank you guys. Uh, keep going. You have a calling, Jay says. Thank you very much. June says, yes, with lots of hearts. Love to all. Peace, guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Hit up my website, www.cubcooker.me. You can get my new book, God-Given Gifts of Brilliance. 
go much deeper on all the stuff we're talking about today. We don't focus so much on the uh, extraterrestrial stuff in that book, but really more on your internal light, who you really are, who God says you are, and who you are uh, through Christ and through his light in this world. So it's a beautiful, beautiful book. I narrate it. It's on audiobook right now. We've sold a ton of copies this weekend. I am so thankful. Thank you, God, and thank you, guys. If you haven't picked it up, go check it out. It's awesome. I'm literally listening to it myself, learning through what God poured through that book. If you're just unsure on like what your purpose and place and how you take your inner gifts and apply them and do something meaningful in your life, that's your book. That's your book. Listen to it once, twice, ten times. I'm listening to it over and over and over and there's some amazing stuff in it, and I promise it will light up your life and help you focus on what you really want and what God is calling you to. So I love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Peace.